like to call our meeting to order, and uh, we're going to deviate just slightly tonight from our printed agenda, and that is that we're going to add an invocation. I'm going to ask Michael Cates to lead us in the invocation, and then immediately following that, our board vice chair, Beth Hutchison, is going to lead us in the pledge. So, Mr. Cates, please. Join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for the gift of this day, for the opportunity uh, that, that you provide us, uh, the the beauty of our surroundings that reminds us of your creative power. We thank you for the privilege of service. We pray especially uh, every day for our students, our faculty, our staff, our families, and how they're impacted um, by the opportunities that they uh, experience here in District 5. We pray that you'd give us wisdom and courage uh, to do always what's best for our students. And we pray a blessing upon uh, this gathering. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Cates. And Ms. Hutchison, if you'll lead us. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Cates, and thank you, Ms. Hutchison. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda for this special call meeting. Do I have a motion? Mr. Cates. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda as posted. Do we have a second? Ms. Hammond seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. And that passes unanimously. And that brings us to our item of discussion tonight, and that is to receive the comprehensive facility study conducted by MB Con, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. Prior to, to uh, tonight's meeting back in July, the board approved plans to ask for a comprehensive facility study, which we're at that point tonight, and we're glad to get the study. And uh, I'd I've asked Dr. Melton to explain some of the meetings they had prior to the study actually taking place and what the parameters of that study were and somewhat. You don't have to get too detailed, but Dr. Melton. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gant. Mm. Um, First, I'd like to commend the board for the vision to have a process such as this. This is truly a unique opportunity. And Mr. Gann, if I may, I would like to welcome all the staff, the administrators that are here, and certainly our parents and community members that have taken the time to be here tonight. This is the beginning of a conversation that's going to be so critical to the success of School District 5. I think it's important to start with the what and the why and then make sure I'm clear to explain the what it is not, because it's so easy for people to misunderstand, to misinterpret, and then that leads to communication issues. And those on the staff know that one of our, our superintendent's priorities for the year, we have five, I won't quiz them in front of an audience, but of those five, one focuses on our internal and our external communication. So it's important for me to pause to explain the why, the what, and the what it is not, just to take away any of that clutter that could happen unnecessarily. First, this is not a comprehensive report about demographics. This is not a report about school capacities, nor is it a report about new schools. Instead, this is a report about individual facility evaluations. Individual facility evaluations. This includes physical inspections. These buildings have been walked by representatives from MBCon. It includes interviews by principals, their appointees, our facility supervisors have been heavily involved and directly involved with this. And there have also been interviews of other support staff or extensions of a school community. So that's the first thing that this is, individual facility evaluations. The second one is individual facility recommendations. Individual facility recommendations. For those of you taking notes, I'm trying to make sure that you hear this messaging to make sure you can capture it. I've been accused that I can talk quickly, Mr. <laughs> Gantt, so I'm trying to make sure that I am talking at a slower pace than I usually do. Now, this individual facility recommendations, this is going to include these primary areas. The scope of improvements. How large might the scope be that are included with these recommendations? recommendations for facilities of how to optimize the facility that we have. So what might those recommendations be? And then an important piece of the conversation, projected cost. What might the cost be if these recommendations are taken into consideration and the board chooses to take action at some point? The third and final part of this study 
is an overall projected cost. It's going to have a categorical summary and also has some priority recommendations that are included with this information from tonight. I have to give a special shout out to Mr. Lynn Richardson, Mr. Scott Carlin. They have been heavily involved throughout this entire process. And for the community to be reminded of, this has been delayed because of the weather that we had back in the fall of two hurricanes that hit the state of South Carolina that delayed our availability and delayed the availability of the MBCon to be able to do the work that they needed to do. So I hope that that's going to help us situate and bring context to this conversation, Mr. Gant. Um, would you like me to do the introductions, or are you, are you prepared to do that? You go ahead. Okay. It's fine. I was prepared, but you go right ahead. Uh, thank you. <laughs> We'd like to welcome this evening from MBCon, Ms. Maggie Detmar. She's here with us. So Maggie, welcome. I'm glad that you're here with us this evening. And leading the presentation tonight is Mr. Robert, or we call him Robbie Brax. Mr. Brax, thank you for being here tonight. The thoughtfulness that this team has put into this process, it is truly comprehensive. And for the community and the stakeholders that are here this evening to understand this will be available via our website as soon as we've had a chance to make sure we've gone through this with the community this evening, this will be available on our website. No one will have to ask for copies. It will be available via a link on the District 5 website. Mr. Gann, anything that I may have overlooked that you would like for me to include in that introduction? I think, I think we're good. And just for the audience to know, this is how this is going to work. We're going we're to move, the board is actually going to move to these seats, and we're going to have Mr. Brax and Ms. Dittmer present from their podium, and we've got, I'm sure you all have a PowerPoint, you're going to be showing us pictures and going through the, the draft booklets that, that we have. And then we hope that's going to go on for about an hour. Then we're going to come back to this position where we can ask questions. But we'd like for you to, you all to present an overview, do that for 45 minutes or an hour, and come back, board members, and be able to ask questions. And for the audience and for the board members, we think this will be first of many, depending on the steps we want to take after this meeting. First of many times we'll discuss this study and have an opportunity to act on all or part of it. So that's, that's the setup that we're going to take. The, um, so at this point, I'd ask the board to move to the uh, nice green seats over here. And Mr. Brax, Ms. Dittmer, if you'd come up, and then we'll move back when you're to the point of questions and answers, okay? Thank you. Yes. I went for a checkup two weeks ago um, to my dentist. I don't know if any of you uh, know the dentist over in Irmo, Dr. Thomas Major. Great dentist, great guy. <clears throat> Routine checkup. He comes to me and he says, Robbie, you've got a tooth that's starting to crack. And he says, I recommend that we put a crown on it. Well, I've been blessed to not have many dental issues, knock on. So I said, well, Dr. Major, what is that? What's entailed with that? And he says, well, we'll set up another appointment for you. You come in, we'll spend about an hour and a half working that tooth down, putting a temporary crown on it. And then a week or two later, when the permanent's ready, you come back, we'll take the old one off, put the new one on. So I didn't really like what that sounded like. I said, well, let me ask you a question, Doc. What if I do nothing? So Dr. Major says, well, it will probably continue to crack. Part of it could fall out. The whole thing might fall out, or we might have to pull it out. Then what we'll do 
is we'll go through a six month, very expensive process of putting in a um, implant. implant. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I want to see who else went through that pain. So he found a problem. He gave me a recommendation. I had a decision to make. And that's the same scenario we have tonight. I'm Robbie Brax. I am the uh, Director of Pre-Construction Services at MBCon. These are the services that uh, we provide for the planning and design of construction projects. With me tonight is Maggie, our very talented Maggie Dittmar, who is a key staff member on the pre-construction group and um, was very involved with assessing your school district. Tonight, our goal is to just present you a brief overview of your current capital uh, improvement needs as we see it. What we'll do tonight is to briefly tell you about our qualifications, then we'll go over the report, and at the end we'll kind of talk about what do you do next. So starting with our qualifications, MBCon is a key component in the construction industry in South Carolina and the Southeast. We've been around for a long time. We have over 500 employees. We have expertise in many different areas, and one of the main areas is K-12 schools. In fact, we have, as you see, we have plan, we, we've been involved with the planning and designing of over 1,200 <clears throat> K-12 construction projects. Those of you that were not uh, part of the selection co committee for selecting us for this uh, study, um, you may not know this, but you know the facility studies we do, we've done a lot of them. In fact, we've completed over 100 facility studies. So this is not new to us. Now we are very excited to be selected uh, to do this project because uh, District 5 is a top rated school district. You have 21, 22 schools out there that house 17,000 students and um, well known school district. But what we're more excited about is that we've worked with school districts that cut their maintenance costs, budgets, cut their renewal budgets, facility renewal budgets, in order to try and save some operating funds. And when we get there, the, we find that their problems have just compounded, and it really takes a lot to get back on top of it. So, you know, we're excited because you all care about your facilities. You have a five-year capital improvement plan that you keep constantly updated, and you have other resources that you're constantly putting into your facilities. Now, even though you have all those resources that you're putting into it, and that even though you are maximizing that, you still can't keep up. You can't keep up because buildings are constantly getting older. The building systems, they have a limited lifespan. They constantly have to be replaced. Educationally, you constantly have changing educational programs, and a lot of those have different facility needs. And the other thing is you, can, uh, you will always have a demand for more security, for more accessibility, and, and to have district equity. So we're going to talk about some of those subjects tonight. But I got to say this, on what you've done so far, on the schools that we've been through, very nice job. Y'all really do take good care of your schools. <clears throat> now, 
Dr. Melton did give a little bit prelude to this, but I did want to take a moment before we start on the, on the report to, to, to talk about this for one minute. This is, as you mentioned, this is an order of magnitude report. For this, we did not do material testing. We did not do systems testing. We did not do design documents um, or any extensive investigations. This document is based on our professional experience and our professional opinion. What we have in here are viable solutions and viable recommendations. The intent of this document is to use it as a tool. This tool is sufficient for you to use to try and establish capital improvement projects to maintain equity amongst the district. And this is, this is very helpful in trying to investigate financial options or strategies. So really, the main purpose of this is for you to start the conversation of capital improvements. All right. So our report is divided into four different sections. The first section, the facility needs assessment, is basically about the process. The process we use is a three-step process starting with the research, where we, before we do anything, we find out where your schools are, how big your schools are, how old your schools are. We've asked the school district and they've provided as much information as they can with some old construction drawings and such, so we can get a feel. So basically what we're doing is we're looking at a map before we start traveling. Then we go to your schools. As Dr. Melton mentioned, we interview the principal. This is, the, this is a very important piece, and it's the first thing we do when we get on campus. I like to say that the, the principal is like the captain of a ship, because the captain knows about the ship, you know, where its soft parts are, where its strong parts are, but in addition to that, <clears throat> The captain knows where the ship is going. So we learn a lot from the, the principal, both construction-wise and what's being done in the schools. <clears throat> Next, we walk the, the campus. We walk the inside of the school. We walk the outside of the school. We walk around the grounds. And we're looking not so much for patching and you know, little maintenance items. We're really looking for big maintenance items. Uh, maybe a, a structural crack or a, a, a find out, a, find a system that's been around for, it's on its last leg. Um, in addition to looking at it construction-wise, we also look at it, uh, how you're doing your programs and whether you've got what you need, what the learning environment's like. We, in fact, we brought in for this, this study here, we brought in a, um, um, I'll call them an expert. They're an architectural firm from the upstate, does a lot of uh, schools, McMillan, Paz, and Smith. And they walked with us through all these schools. And they looked at the spaces and how they were being used. <clears throat> and I don't know if you know this or not, but you've got about three and a half million square feet of building that we had to walk through. <laughs> Once we're familiar with your schools, so, you know, this is a continuing process, so once we're familiar with your schools, now we can go talk to your facilities people, your maintenance people, your, your, your district uh, operations. And we can talk to them about you know, maybe some things that we didn't know or some questions we had, and we can talk to them about you know, what are the long-range plans and what, would you, what are you gonna try and implement? Is there something new coming in the district? We take all this information that we've gathered and we go back and we start working. 
we, we put teams together that, that go one school at a time. And we're asking ourselves, all right, how can we fix the problem? How can we improve this school? This is a collaborative effort by our teams. And what we're doing is we're using the notes from the interviews, the notes from walking around the school, hundreds of pictures that we took while we were walking around. We're using some of those documents that the school district gave us, the information they gave us, but mostly we're using our experience of looking what you have and how to make it better. We take all that and we put it into this document right here. The second section of the report, identified challenges, that's a, generally what we found. So in doing this, this portion of the project, um, we always started off trying to categorize the school district. Um, we did some, some, some work next door in uh, Le Lexington One, um, matter of fact, didn't mention it, but Lexington One and Richland Two, um, their repeat clients, repeat facility studies, and repeat successful referendums. But in doing Lexington One's uh, reports, they've had a lot of growth, so that was their section. But in this project, we were not addressing growth. What we were addressing is your existing facilities and what, what we can do to improve it. So we had these four categories that we came up with. In the first one, what we are looking at is the classroom environment. Is it conducive to learning? Is it the right size? Is it the right configuration? What's the acoustics like? This was a good place to talk about that. Um, what's the lighting level like? Is it comfortable? Uh, educational, uh, educational program needs, what do you, ha what do you have uh, or need for basic program, general program? focused programs, special needs programs, athletic programs. Some of the key factors that we found were uh, in just talking about the education aspect of it, we were a little concerned that you have what we call four pod schools. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But these are schools that a lot of the districts have replaced. We found um, some things needed to spruce up some science labs and to do some more work in a few other specialty areas. Three of your high school, the V3 high schools that have outdoor athletic facilities, they need some more uh, for their athletics program and uh, furniture. Now I know the school district has been trying to update the furniture as you do major projects and such, but you know you haven't got everywhere yet, so there's still needs out there. The next section, the safety, uh, security, and accessibility needs. Um, as I said earlier, there will always be needs for this. So we found some, we found some needs. And you know, can you be too safe? The next section, the next category, rather, is the uh, major maintenance of facility renewal needs. Um, like safety, you are always going to have maintenance. Uh, you will always have maintenance needs. Um, the buildings are getting old. The, I think the industry standard or the industry rule of thumb, rather, is that a, a building is really is good for 50 years. And then you really need to replace it. Now you can keep pushing it, but that's the, in, the uh, construction industry's rule of thumb. Um, what's in, what was interesting is that um, almost half of your schools have original building components or building areas um, that are over 40 years old, almost half the schools. You know, you've built around, you put new stuff in there. So with those older buildings, you've got antiquated building systems, need new equipment, you've got issues that you have just have all the time. And then the last category um, 
is your district operations needs. Um, these people are responsible for keeping the whole school district running smooth. They're, they're responsible for what's being uh, taught and they're responsible for where it's being taught and how they get there. So this staff, which it takes a large staff to do this, um, they require a place that's safe and that's functional. So we have some recommendations for this as well. The third part of the, of the uh, facility, facility study is the th third section is the individual facility assessments. What we do in this section is we give a recommendation for each school. Now I'm going to have Maggie come up in a minute and um, go through some of those. Um, but before she does that, I want to tell you, um, so when you look at it, you kind of understand how, the, how that works. We've, through all these facility studies that we've done, we have um, found that if we have a one-page consolidated or condensed um, version of our recommendations, our, our conclusions, our recommendations, it works best. It kind of keeps everything focal, focused and highlights the important pieces. Um, so for every school, we have one of these uh, forms. We, we, talk, we give you a little bit about the general information, the overall analysis, including what, what we rated your school as. We list the major concerns, not all the concerns, but the major concerns, and then what we recommend you do at that school. It's not an all-entailed list, but it is trying to hit all the highlights. And in those recommendations, we are providing you our professional opinion as to what that's going to cost. All right. Now, I also want I want you to know this about the cost. These costs are not just construction costs because project cost is more than just construction cost. All right. So what does that mean? All right. Well, there's a building cost. There's a cost to do the site work around it, put in parking lots and such. There's a cost to design and bid the project. There's a, there's a, a cost that's associated with, with codes. Codes make the owner pay some costs. Um, there is uh, a lot of these things will need new furniture. Technology, yeah. Sometimes you gotta redo it. If you gut, gut an area, you gotta put technology back in. So you, need, you have costs for that. Every project, no matter how small or how big, has to have a project contingency. So we've included that in the costs. And then, we don't know when you're going to do these projects. So, and we know it's not going to be when we leave here tomorrow. I mean, it'd probably be good if you did. But, um, so we've put some inflation in there just to, to look out into the distance a little bit, not very far. So, while Maggie comes up here to start the process where she is going to, uh, She's going to give you the school, and she's going to give you the highlights of it, and we're going to go through each one of them. Um, I did want to say this. Now, it's obvious that District 5 is passionate about your facilities and school district. And I know you want to ask a million questions about each school, but we can't do that tonight. As I said in the very beginning, tonight's intent is for it to be a brief overview of what we found. So, with that, I'm going to ask Maggie to come up and go through each one of the schools for us. Thank you, Robbie. Um, so we're going to start with the elementary schools, and like Robbie said, uh, this isn't going to be exhaustive. I'm just going to pick a couple of key items from each school to tell you about. Um, and then I'd also like to mention that we did rank your schools. Um, there's four rankings from poor fair, good, and excellent, and you'll see that as we go throughout. Um, so we're going to start with Ballantyne Elementary School. Um, we've ranked this facility as good. 
A few key recommendations for this facility. Um, we'll start with infrastructure. Uh, when a school gets to be between about 15 and 20 years old, a lot of the original infrastructure systems do need to be replaced. Um, so this is just a normal replacement. It's not that anything's bad, it's just typical. Um, so for this school, we're recommending to replace the roof and the HVAC system. And then also at the playground area, the district's been having some issues through the years with some rocks that are coming up through the playground and they're constantly having to go back in every year and address this issue. So instead of addressing it every year, we're recommending that we actually do a big project and try to get those rocks out and resurface that playground. Um, and then also at this facility, there's a crosswalk from Milford Park. And with this crosswalk, uh, we're recommending that you do some security improvements, um, add some site lighting, and really define that crosswalk so it's a safe access to the campus for the students. The next school is Chapin Elementary School. Uh, we've also ranked this school as good. Uh, you guys did a lot of work in the 2008 referendum with this school. Um, we did still find some needs. Uh, there's some drainage issues in the interior courtyards at this facility. Um, we do recommend that you add some handicap uh, hardware to the exterior doors for better access. And then also, this facility is over 40 years old, and while the district has done an amazing job of keeping this facility up to date and replacing the infrastructure systems, um, we do recommend some interior upgrades just due to the age. The next facility is Dutch Fork Elementary School. Uh, this school we've rated as fair. Um, this is due in fact to the multiple infrastructure systems that do need to be replaced, um, including the HVAC system and a PA system, as well as adding a secure vestibule to the school. And again, the district has been doing a great job of up going to all of their facilities and adding these vestibules as they can, um, but we're just coming along and any remaining schools that we see, we're recommending to do that as well. Um, and then finally for this school, there's some kindergarten classrooms that don't have restrooms and typically we like to recommend that you have restrooms in all the kindergarten classrooms. So we are recommending that as well as some general group restroom upgrades. The next school is H.E. Corley Elementary School and we've ranked this school as good. Um, again, we're just recommending to replace the HVAC system for a regular replacement, uh, adding a canopy to the staff entrance as well as this school and some other schools, as Robbie mentioned early in the presentation, uh, has some furniture needs. So we're recommending to replace some of the antiquated classroom furniture. Harvest and West Elementary School. <laughs> we have ranked this facility as poor. And you'll notice that we flagged it. Um, and we're actually going to recommend a couple of options for this school. And you'll notice this throughout the individual recommendation sheets. There's a few more schools that are flagged. And Robbie is actually going to address those later in the presentation. So we'll move on to Irmo Elementary School. <laughs> this school is actually the oldest school in your district. Um, but with the 2008 referendum, you guys added a major new addition, and the original facility has been very well uh, maintained. Uh, we did find a few things in the original facility, um, and that includes replacing the HVAC just in that original facility, and then adding some better handicap access to the main entrance, as well as the auditorium, which is a part of the original facility. We just recommend a few upgrades there. Lake Murray Elementary School, we have ranked as good. Um, we recommend that you replace the roof on this facility, only the original building, as well as some drainage issues that we found on site, correcting those and replacing the flooring and some classrooms and the theater. Leap Park Elementary School also got a lot of updates during the 2008 referendum. Um, so we didn't find a lot here. We did have some minor improvements, including adding a canopy to the staff entrance, some minor roof repair, adding some additional security cameras throughout the school and the campus, and then also some just general interior upgrades that were needed. Nursery Road Elementary School, also ranked poor and also flagged to be discussed later in the presentation. 
Oak Point Elementary School uh, is ranked as good, and we're recommending to replace the HVAC system. Uh, again, replace the furniture in the school, and then add some outdoor security improvements, including site lighting and some additional perimeter fencing and some repair of the fencing. River Springs Elementary, we have ranked as good. Um, there were some infrastructure needs at this facility, including upgrading some plumbing and sewer lines, and also improving the electrical service, and then replacing the roof and the PA system. So some pretty extensive infrastructure, uh, but also adding a few security cameras around the campus and the facility. And then your last elementary school, Seven Oaks Elementary, we've ranked as fair. Now I know that this facility received a lot of improvements during the 2008 referendum, but we still found some areas that we felt were some safety concerns. So we are recommending to relocate the admin area to be near the majority of the parking at that facility. Currently it's at the front of the facility, very near the road, and there's very minimal parking for visitors. And that causes confusion when you have a lot of visitors coming to that site not really knowing where the furniture is because they're having to park somewhere else. So we are recommending that. Uh, there is, there are a lot of ex exterior corridors at this facility. If you've ever been there, um, the students are walking in corridors that are actually open to the outside. Um, and for the most part, this isn't a big deal, but there are some classrooms that are remote to the main facility. And these classrooms are very close to the perimeter of the campus. And so the students are actually walking exposed very close to very busy and public spaces because it's on the perimeter. So we are recommending that you enclose those corridors and connect them into the main facility. And then a couple of other items for this facility. Um, the district has begun replacing some of the windows there's still a wing that still has left to be done, so we're recommending to do that, as well as upgrade the fire alarm system. So now we're gonna move on to your intermediate schools. And we'll start with Chapin Intermediate School, which is ranked as good. Um, we're recommending to upgrade the front entry and to include a secure vestibule as a part of that upgrade. And then a partial roof replacement and HVAC upgrades, as well as some plumbing upgrades. Crossroads Intermediate, we ranked as fair. Um, we're recommending some security system upgrades at this facility, as well as replacing the roof and upgrading the electrical system. And then also uh, the science rooms in this facility have very outdated equipment and casework. And so we're recommending that those science rooms be upgraded. Okay, your middle schools. We'll start with Chapin Middle School. This is the newest facility for the district. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, we've ranked it as excellent. <laughs> there are only minor needs here. Um, so we did make a few recommendations, but they're minor. Um, we, some of those needs include adding some additional computer charging stations, as well as adding some additional lighting on the, on the campus. Dutch Fork Middle School was ranked as good. Uh, we're recommending to upgrade the front entry and then include a secure vestibule. And then some infrastructure needs include replacing about 50% of the HVAC system as well as the roof. Uh, we do recommend replacing the classroom flooring and then some general theater upgrades. Irma Middle School, we ranked as fair. And the reason that Irmo Middle School seems to have a higher cost um, is it's a few reasons. They have a lot of infrastructure needs, including a roof replacement that's needed, a partial HVAC replacement, replacing the bell and the phone systems. Uh, but also, Irmo Middle School has a gymnasium that does not have public restrooms. So when people are coming to the gym, they're having to actually cross the pond in the middle of the campus to go to the main facility to access restrooms. So we are recommending that new restrooms be built um, at that facility. And then in addition to that, with the pond, there are obviously some site drainage issues going on at that campus. 
So we're recommending to address some of those issues. Um, and then that campus is so separated with the pond, there's a lot of sidewalks. And a lot of these sidewalks are aging and they're cracking. And so we're recommending some repair and some replacement. Okay, the high schools. Our Chapin High School, we have ranked as fair. Uh, Chapin High School had a lot of renovations done during the 2008 referendum. Uh, the main reason that we have ranked this as fair is due to some athletic program needs that they have. And so along with the additional needs at the facility, including access control, an HVAC system, partial replacement, and lighting, and also work to the communication system, we, that's why we rank this as fair. Dutch Fork High School was also ranked fair. It also had a lot of renovations done during the 2008 referendum, but it also has some athletic needs. Um, we also noticed that it could use some additional academic space for uh, lectures. So instead of recommending two separate facilities, um, we're recommending one multi-purpose room that can be used for both a lecture style classroom as well as an additional practice athletic space. Um, in addition to that, we're recommending to upgrade the front entry and include a secure vestibule, replace the roof, replace the lighting, and it also needs some furniture upgrades. Irmo High School was also ranked as poor. And again, uh, while the 2008 referendum did bring a beautiful new performing arts facility, the remaining facility still has some extensive needs and Robbie's gonna discuss that later. The last high school is Spring Hill High School. And this high school includes the Academy for Success program. Whenever Spring Hill High School was built, the Academy for Success wasn't intended to be there, but the program was added into this facility later. Um, the Academy for Success has a, a separate entrance and so we, it, didn't, it does not have a secure vestibule, so we are recommending that you add one at that main entrance. And then also from the high school to the Center for Advanced Technologies, there's a crosswalk there, and we're recommending that it be improved. Uh, the students are crossing from the high school to that facility, and um, we're just concerned about traffic on that road, and so we're recommending some speed bumps there as well as some additional signage, so just some general improvements for the safety. Okay, so that's all the schools, uh, but you do have some other facilities that we would like to discuss. And we'll start with the Center for Advanced Technical Studies. Uh, we've ranked this facility as excellent. Um, it is uh, fairly new and um, had a, it was done during the 2008 referendum. We did find some minor issues, uh, some site drainage issues that we're recommending to be repaired in between the two long classroom wings, as well as some light fixtures in the lab areas that we're recommending to be replaced. <clears throat> okay, so over the last decade, you've added a lot of new facilities to address increasing student enrollment, and that means you've had to add additional buses. And so, we are recommending that your transportation department receive a new transportation facility. Not only will this give them an additional space to do maintenance on this increasing amount of buses, but it will also provide an opportunity for them to bring, have a space for the state transportation to be able to come and work on your buses. And hopefully this will decrease the amount of travel that they're having to do to get their buses worked on. And then, as you all know, the current maintenance department is located on the current district office campus. And it's located in a repurposed facility. And I don't know if you guys have been there, uh, but your maintenance department is doing an amazing job in a facility that really doesn't function well for the work that they're doing. Um, so we're, we wanted to provide a recommendation that would address some of their needs. Uh, but we also noticed that you have a storage facility located at Chapin High School, that the amount of storage needs that you have is expanding the storage space that you have available at that facility. Um, 
And whenever we went out there, they had some pods that were rented that were also there to help with that storage. So instead of recommending two separate facilities be built, uh, we're recommending that one new maintenance facility be built to include some storage space to address your storage needs. And finally, we have the district office. And as you'll notice, there's a big blue flag, which means Robbie's gonna talk about it in this next section. Not always good to be king. <laughs> so as Maggie um, pointed out to you, there were several projects that we have flagged that we had wanted to chat about a little bit. <clears throat> the first one was about your pod schools. So you've got four. Two of them you've done some wall improvements to. Uh, Chapin Elementary and Lee Park Elementary. And those two schools, they're actually laid out a little bit different than Nursery Road and Harbison West. Um, they were probably the better one to go and try and improve. I don't know, I'm, I'm sure you've been to the classrooms here. The problem is that, you know, you go in through a door and you got this little small area that you're getting to to try and get to like three, four, five, 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 what is it, five? five classrooms. And very small halls, it's very awkward, it's open, it's very loud. Um, so how do you fix that? How do you fix that? Well, it's a challenge, I'll tell you. With this design in this school and in the Harvest and West School, it's a, it's a challenge. So we asked the architects that were, did some consulting with us um, to take a look at it. And they sketched up an idea where you take a pod um, that has 10 classrooms in there right now of all you know, triangle shapes and all different shapes. You take that, you gut the walls out, and you put eight classrooms back that are a little bit bigger, a little bit better. But now you've lost two classrooms in each one of those pods. So now you gotta go find a place to build an eight classroom addition and the restrooms and everything else required with it. So they helped us with that too, so that we could price it up. But you know, when you do all that, um, basically what you're doing is you are forcing today's um, expectations into an outdated concept. So it's, it doesn't work that great. So, you know, we said a couple, a couple options. So the option is, well, what if we just go new? All right. So we priced both of those up. The numbers at the bottom were for two schools. Uh, and it is a lot of money either way. Now, on the first option there, where we're trying to do something with what you have now, $28 million each, that's not just gutting those pods and move, put in new walls and building that new addition. This, this is a 1970s school, okay? It's been around a while. It's got a lot of other needs. Um, it's got infrastructure needs. It's got restroom upgrades needed, code upgrades, playgrounds, canopies, furniture. When you compare that cost to new, our, what we tell our clients is, if, if the cost to bring your facility up as close as you can to today's standards and codes and such, if it is 70 to 80% of new construction, you really should think about just replacing the school. You know, the, the question is, as you look at each one of those options, is what do you gain with that investment? Next flag for Robbie. Irmo High School, like Maggie said, beautiful arts edition, beautiful arts edition. Um, but you still have a lot of school that needs attention. In fact, by our measurement, that is your biggest school, building-wise. And uh, it's one of the older ones as well, all right? So about half of it 
Now, you may have torn down some of this, but as, I under, as, as we saw it, about half of it was originally built in the 60s or 70s, okay? The worst, or the, the most difficult part about that school is that it has been added on to 10 times. <laughs> I don't think there was a master plan in the 1960s and 1960s for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and because you did it that way, I've seen it done this way on other kinds of projects, you have your administration and entrance down here, your students down there, your cafeteria and other core areas way back over here. But it's another one of those challenges that um, took a lot of thought. So we... <clears throat> We said, all right, what, what do we do? I mean, these 60s and 70s buildings, I mean, we really just need to replace them. So we started looking at how you could do that. And it becomes very complicated because it's a small campus. And, you know, it, um, you may have seen, you may have done it here, I don't think so, but I know other districts have done it where you go and you build something new, move students into it, go to the, where they came out of, tear it down, put something new, and you just keep, working your way around the campus takes a, a, a 18 month project turns into three years. Expensive, very complicated on that campus. Um, Mr. Richardson got mad because I talked about um, messing up his, wherever he is, messing up his uh, new softball field. <laughs> um, so, you know, we started, it just became really complicated. We, there weren't any real great options. So we said, all right, what can we do at Irmo High School keeping what you've got, all right? So here's our concept. Put a new secure front entrance and administration up at the fine, what we call the Fine Arts Plaza. Everybody goes to the, to the the new building to go into the school. Well, the entrance is down there. Well, I guess it's down here too. Um, so put, put that you know, at, the, at the plaza. It's, it becomes more central. Um, you turn the old admin spaces into instructional spaces. Our concept would be to take all those classrooms and reanalyze what, what you have and where you have it. You may want to reorganize how your classrooms are. And in that process, what we would recommend is you think about doing more things, adding more spaces and, and uh, ideas to enhance that arts magnet program that you have there. That's the number we came up with. Now, what I, all those things I just told you about, new front door, um, re you know, reorganize the classrooms, all that, that's only about 14 million of that number. The rest of that number is because you have a really big school over there, a big school that needs some attention. So our option number two really is you need to have its own study. There's just, you really need to look at all the options you can do. It's just, it, it would take some time. So that's, that's our second option on that one is to have a separate study. The last flag that Maggie gave me is, um, is the district office. Built in 1975. I tried to find what the um, enrollment of the school district was, how many students they had at that time, and I was unsuccessful, but what, what I did find was that Irmo, South Carolina, from the time that building was built, the next 10 years tripled in population. So it, it affected the school district. So you had just built this brand new building, you spent a lot of money building this building in 1975. All this happened and then it kept coming and you, just, you didn't have time to expand. And so now you've got your, uh, a lot of your staff spread out in four or five different areas around the district. It's hard to work that way. So the, the, the building is not 
big enough for the, the staff you need for a 17, over 17,000 student school district. It's old, it's got a lot of needs, a lot of infrastructure needs. And then, that commercial district has changed a little bit here lately. <laughs> and I know I'm getting old, but I have a hard time getting in and out of your school district office with my car. It's just getting really busy. And this is where you bring parents and have teacher meetings and st or staff meetings and, and such. So we really think that you ought to think about replacing this, uh, your district office. Now, we looked at it in two different ways. Um, there's a school district nearby here that has two operations. And so we looked at that concept. So what we would, we would say on that first option is that you build a smaller district office in a place that, is, that works better uh, traffic-wise in and out. That would have um, house your planning and administration, your instructional, your um, student services, um, HR, human resources, um, your accounting, where most of your traffic coming to the school, or I say traffic, where most of the people come into your school, whether it's the staff, whether it's parents, students, would go to that facility. And then you use your existing facility as a support services area, where, you would, where you'd have food service, you'd have IT, You'd have maintenance and, and, and facilities, transportation. But if you, but that building still needs attention, okay, for those people that are gonna stay there. So when you look at it, I mean, basically you're building new and then you're doing probably 70, 80% at the old. It'd be nice if somebody bought the piece of property and you just go build a new one. We'll see. That's our recommendation is that you replace your school district office. All right. Well, that was lots and lots of information that we've given you tonight. So let's, let's kind of summarize what we've got. If you put it in the categories that we talked about at the very beginning, these are what the numbers look like. In the first number we have there, we did include replacement of Nursery Road and replacement of Harvison West. The second number, we did include some costs associated with, re, uh, with moving the, the, um, the, the recommendation of moving the front entrance at Irmo, the recommendation of moving the front entrance at Seven Oaks and enclosing those corridors. That third number, <laughs> I want to tell you this. When you add up all the projects that Ma Maggie mentioned when she said roofing, you add it up, that's $30 million worth of roofing in your school district. When you add up heating and air conditioning or HVAC, uh, that's $60 million. That's where most of that money is. And the last number does have the new, a new district office. All those numbers add up to a very large number, a very large number. So what are you going to do? All right, well, that was my question at the beginning. What if we do nothing? What if we don't fix the crack in the tooth? What if we gamble that it's not going to cause further problems? How long do we have to suffer with that crack in the tooth? I made my decision to be proactive right here. Um, this is a much, much larger issue that we're talking about with your facilities, but you need to be proactive too. So being proactive, the first step you need to take is to prioritize. You don't have to prioritize 1 through 22 or whatever. You can prioritize with high medium, low type priorities, many different ways. You need to investigate how you can obtain more funds, what funds could be used 
to do capital improvements. We want you to use this tool. We've given you a lot of good information. We've given you a really good start. And it's all about starting the conversation. Thank you. Which, Mr. Brax, if you, we appreciate the presentation. We're gonna move back up to our table. You'll just turn and sort of face us. We, I'm sure we've got some questions that we want to ask you. And again, for the board and for the community, this is a first night, first really good look at this. We're not going to dig too far in the weeds, but we do have some questions. So. Yes, sir. Lagans. Ms. Lagans, do you think we can get this light on? But before you go, let me thank you. I didn't do this earlier. Thank you for hosting us tonight over here at Nursery Road Elementary School. We appreciate your hospitality again. We'll work on this light, and then again, we're, uh, we're taking our first good hard look and our first good questions, and there, there'll be many, as many more of these as the public and the board deems necessary before we get to some kind of point with it. But with that, I will entertain questions or recognize folks to, to ask uh, Mr. Brax and Maggie questions. Ms. Hutchison. Yes, thank you so much um, to both of you for a great presentation and for this study. I, I do know it took a long time. Um, I'm gonna go straight to Irmo High School and when I saw that it didn't have a flag on it, I, I thought, oh no, I'm putting a flag on it. Um, and I appreciate you explaining that the complexity, it seems to be, that the reason that you didn't put uh, exp um, how much it would cost for renovation is that there are too many variables here um, and it would require a separate study, so I appreciate that. You know, when, for the audience, the recommendations um, for the renovations total almost $44 million on a 55-year-old um, school that has had, and I did not know this, 10 additions or, to it over the years. And that's a lot. I do know, and I appreciated your security review, where you, you mentioned the fact that it was, diff it was really a uh, very diff uh, difficult for the administration and teachers to be able to see the students at all times because the you know the many staircases I forgot how many staircases you said but it was many more than I knew of the winding halls and for those of us who have gotten lost in Irmo High School I, I really understand what you're talking about um, so when you talk about, um, I, I just can't see adding, um, spending $45 million, and I know I'm jumping the gun. So for us, when, as we're thinking about next steps, and you said that it would require a separate study, can you give us an idea of what that would take um, to do a separate study, and what would we need to do that just for the board to um, deliberate as we are deliberating this whole um, facility study. Well, it definitely, are we on? It's uh, definitely a, um, a challenge. It will require a lot of expertise. It requires a lot of, um, um, Creativity, really, 
Um, as, as I said, we had uh, worked on some ideas and had to turn around and go to a different direction. Um, I think it would probably take uh, probably a, a few months to really work your way through it. Um, the, the, as I said, the challenge is, you know, if you keep it there, how do you do that? Um, the, the challenge with trying to do a phased replacement on a campus is that you have these central areas, your central electrical area, or your central mechanical area, central communications area. So when you start replacing buildings, you gotta think about that, that it has to continuously run. And then you're putting in new and you gotta have a new place. It's very complicated. It, it's, a, it's a pretty long process to try and come up with uh, your options on that. Um, well, I do, I will, I wrote down what you said is one of the sentences you said, what do you gain with renovations when you were talking about, I think Harbison West and Nursery Road and that's exactly the question that comes to my mind when I think about Irmo High School um, and spending $45 million on renovations. And, you know, it's what is, there's many sayings about what, putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. And so I, that will be a, a real emphasis of mine um, go, moving forward is that I think that I'd much rather see us um, use our money wisely and not to say it's not wise but in my estimation um, other people board members may find that it's really what they think is best but in my estimation I would much prefer to see us um, look at some different options rather than spending $45 million. But saying that, I'm glad that you looked at this and identified what you said were the, um, some of the overall problems with that school. So thank you. And to keep us in the same vernacular, oh, okay. does anybody have a question they want to relate to Irmo High School? Yes. Ms. Hammond and then Mr. Lovis, I'll come to you. Um, Especially if anybody has a thing with Irmo. Um, okay. Thank you. When you mentioned, um, and I know you're, I have three children that graduated from Irmo High, I know it well, and it is a very large area of school. I think 30 mile plus or something, if I'm remembering. Um, would your cost that you gave us, and, and I think Ms. Hutchinson makes a great point. I, I've watched and lived through all these sort of tacking on, I mean, when the kids were out in rain, we put that little, well, I went on the board then, but they put a little, uh, walkway that had a cover over it. We just piecemealed. And I, I, she's right. I know that, that when you're uh, doing additions to make it all look right. And, and I, I know that I'm very prejudiced to the wonderful um, flagship school Irmo always was and drew all the people that are out here now. And it, it's, it's a dream of mine for the, for the facilities, equity and all of them. But I have to agree, this is very important. I would agree about a separate study but what I did want to ask you, you made this statement about how large it is. Is your cost based on the present enrollment? Because Irmo, when my kids were there, there were 2,000 kids, and it, we needed all that space. Um, it, it's down to, I don't know, 1,400, or I may be wrong, but my point is would that enter into our, as we built it, and, and I really don't know the answer to this, I would want to hear from you. Would you, reno if we built a new one or renovate it, would we be looking at um, the enrollment being larger than that or would we do it for the enrollment at the present time? You know, that's always hard for a board because um, at one time Nursery Road had 1,500 kids in it. So as we plan, we need, and I, what I hope to pay for it, is your expertise in doing a lot of these schools, how we should base how enrollment should play in our cost and how we should best move forward. But Irma was really one of the major ones on my mind, so thank you. 
Looking for comment? Yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a couple of questions in there. Uh, <laughs> in Rome, in Rome. Well, um, you know, it's a crystal ball. Well, it's kind of like pricing this. What's it going to be in the future? Um, what's the enrollment in Irmo going to be? You can do some things to be prepared. You can, um, it's very common to build uh, the core spaces for a larger <coughs> anticipated uh, enrollment and just build for what you have today. Um, that's very common, but it does take a crystal ball. You need, uh, you know, it's, a, it's a demographics study as to, and prediction. Um, the enrollments, design around it. It's 300, we, we come up with 390,000 square feet. And you, and I think 1,300, what was the number you, right. Is it enrollment? 1,350, yeah. something like that. Um, you've got uh, Dutch Fork is, um, is uh, seven, 1,700 student. Thank you, Donna Gary. What's that? 1760 yeah. and it's in a facility that's about, th thank you, for, it's a facility that's about 380,000 feet. So there is something to look at at that, at that school when you go to, to redo it. It may not need to be 390,000 feet. Right. Could, Mr. Chairman, may I ask just for a point of clarification? <clears throat> we're using a lot of numbers and I want to make sure we're using the right numbers. For example, you just made a square footage statement about about Dutch Fork, which is considerably larger than the square footage you've stated on the report. Ir on Irmo is where we have our error. So, Ir so Irmo you have in our report is 304,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. Are you saying it was? Our, our mistake, that's why it's draft, yes sir. We picked that up here the last, because we needed to get that report out early. Our square footage on that building is incorrect okay. on that draft. Thank you, Mr. Case. Mr. White, was your question related to Irmo? Yes. Okay. Um, you, sh you showed comparable, or the, you know, when you did your percentage analysis on what was it, Harvison West and Mercer Road. Road? Yes, sir. Um, just ballpark. What would it take to build a high school like Irmo High School today? If we weren't doing this phased-in stuff, what? Um, any range? I mean, I'm trying to figure out where 43 million fits to a new right. price. Well, I tried to look at what you just did with your Spring Hill. Um, I really didn't get the time to, to, to meet with uh, district operations to fully understand it. But looking at your, um, what you have on, the, uh, on your website, I see the construction cost of the building and the site is roughly 40, 44, 45 million dollars. To that, you've got, um, um, all your design costs, all those things I talked about, design costs, furniture costs, technology, um, um, contingency monies and such. Um, so we're up, we're, we're pushing up into the $50 million. There are no athletic facilities at Spring Hill. You know, maybe you need another $15 million for that. I'm, I'm hoping you're writing these down that you have a calculator for me. Um, and. And then here's the other thing. The uh, Irma, Irma, the, the um, enrollment and size of the schools, Spring Hill's your smallest high school, a good ways by uh, building size and enrollment. So we need a multiplier on whatever number we were up to to get it up there. So I, I think I, when I was just kind of running numbers and thinking about that in my head, I think we were up in the, at least $80 million, $90 million. Um, plus you need to add some inflation. Um, maybe it was above that, but if, if you wrote those numbers down, I would appreciate any help there. So you're, you're, you're getting close to $100 million. I mean, that, you, you go around and that's, uh, for, for a large school, that's not that unusual. It's quite that you're a comprehensive school. But so, I mean, in reality, we're not at 70, 80 percent. We're probably 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Mr. Loveless. Uh, on a different subject, uh, uh, we were just at a uh, South Carolina School Board Association uh, 
presentation this weekend, and all of us are back here, but uh, one of the items on there was security. And we, we um, this is not to say anything about your team, I'm just questioning, but um, the fellow that, that, inter you know, that gave the seminar was somebody that had been at Columbine High School. Okay, and um, his <coughs> emphasis on safety and security was obviously a little different from what yours might have been. And so I was wondering, uh, who, who is our, on your team, was it a, an architect or did we have an outside security consultant that was part of putting together your, your presentation or? Well, it's a combination of things. It's a combination of the interviews with the principal, interviews with the district um, to, uh, operations. Um, we did have an architect on the team, as I said, we walked around with, uh, and then our, then our own observations. Right. Um, Yes, I know that uh, they are, uh, th those that were involved with Columbine are going around visiting school districts and talking about, as I said in the presentation, you know, it never, it, it, it's just gonna keep going. You know, I, I, I tried, I, I meant to look it up, but one of the newest things I heard is putting in a, um, what did they call it? A solid corner or something like that in a classroom. Right. They could that, hide behind a wall. Protective corner. <laughs> yeah, and protective then, corner. Then there's all sorts of things about glass and new, new, you know, new types of glass that are on the ground floor that are different from, from elevated floors. Glass inside the building was different from, you know, we're not just talking about your grandfather's tempered glass. We're talking about, you know, some other things. So um, my question was, when we do when we come back to look at a separate study for a, for a building like Irmo that has, has a tremendous amount of uh, hidden corridors and stairwells and, and trans, you know, transition spaces and things like that, should we also look to include maybe uh, you know, a different type of expert other than an architect? And I'm not, I'm not saying that from point to, you know, to, to question your expertise. I'm just saying should we look at that and consider that when we're considering these new schools. Well, they are the experts on that, and absolutely. That's why you hired us, because we're experts on the construction costs. Right. They're experts in that, that realm. Is, so I would, uh, I would recommend it, yes, sir. Okay, and one other question, just to top this off. Um, I noticed in the study that we had uh, a new athletic stadium for Chapin High School included in here. All right. And uh, how much, uh, uh, there was a combination of figures added together that was somewhere toward $12.5 million. How much would the stadium itself, uh, it just as the order of magnitude, you got a you gotta guess? It's not a complete new stadium. That is new press boxes on both sides, expanding the uh, seating, the uh, lighting. What else do we have? Electrical upgrades for it. It was not a new stadium. You okay. list, you, he listed that on the Chapin High page, so it's listed there. Yeah, but I mean, it's a combination of things to make up that 12, or am I reading that wrong? It, it is, but as he just stated, there's no, no new stadium proposed. New stadium. Well, I, I mean, what, what do we have in there for a football stadium is the point. Without, the 12.5 million was a bunch of other things included. Oh, how much of the 12 million was to go yes. into the stadium? Yes. I don't have that with me tonight. We'd be glad to supply that. Okay, to that's that was my yeah. question. Okay, thank you, Mr. Case. Did you have a just um, for clarity uh, as we use this as a tool going forward? And and I appreciate this um, uh, report and how it, it will be a a, a guiding uh, a document for us on page. 18, I don't know if you have a draft in, in front of you. Yes, sir. Um, you, you mentioned what was included uh, in the cost estimations, construction costs, design fees, contingencies. And then what was not included was inflation cost. But you've talked a couple of times about some inflation cost is included in the numbers. Can, can you give us um, a rough idea of I've heard you say it's included. I've heard you say it's not included. So I need to understand uh, what's in there and what's not. Well, thank you for flagging that, um, the blue flag. Um, we do have in inflation costs in there. We figured about two to three years across the board. Some of them may be early. Some may, may go out a little further. 
So beyond that, we would expect to have to adjust. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Brax, I'd like to, to ask you, um, we mentioned Nursery Road and Harbison West as two schools that possibly fit the same realm and maybe a little easier than Irmo High School. We're not talking about athletic fields and, and the, well, we're talking about fields there, but I, I'd like to ask you if, if that choice was made to replace, is there enough space, there's two separate campuses, enough space to uh, build, if say we chose to build a new elementary school, both those sites, is there enough space to put that in or would we still have to phase it in as you spoke up a little while ago, which adds cost. <clears throat> so we have some, some costs built in to try and do some phasing, but you know, this gets a little bit deeper into the, the challenge of it. Those are both very small sites, and um, they're mostly used up, and they're, they're bordered by neighborhoods and such. Um, the, the number we gave you, which is roughly 34 million per school, is, you know, I think that thir for a 750 student school, $30 million is reasonable. Um, there's gonna be some inflation, and then obviously we ha have for a couple of years, and then we've got some money in there to do some phasing. It'd be a little bit challenging on these schools. Might have to go to two-story elementary schools, but um, there are some costs involved, and we did look at that. Thank you. What other questions the board have? Or the administration? Mr. Richardson, you, got any, you have any financial concerns about that number you saw? <laughs> I saw sweat popping out. Somebody get Mr. Richardson some water. He's still, he's just now getting his breath back. <laughs> Ms. Gardner's got a question. Mr. Richardson, if you get where you can talk again, you tell us and we'll. <laughs> so for these, is it on? So for these recommendations, um, would you say that this would get all of our facilities maybe up to speed for a 10 year period of time for 25 years what would your estimate is it going to be different for every single school i mean i wondered what the parameter is if we spend the 200 and whatever i mean if we spend it all and we did it all would we be good for 20 years five years would you yeah um typically with school districts we call this a 10-year plan Mr. White. <clears throat> Since Mr. Richardson didn't talk, I'm gonna come back to you and ask you a question. Um, when, when we did the, the referendum in 2008, it was about 250 million and, and you raised millage to do that, and then we've got, what, 20 years to, to pay that off. I mean, obviously, any discussion about this, I mean, last time we went through a facilities review committee that, that went through a whole list of priorities and needs and, you know, selected but it, it it seems to me that that sort of the starting point would be what can this district afford with a referendum that was 10 years ago that's still being amortized and i mean do you have any general guidelines i mean i'm, I'm sure you're the, the one that's going to come back and give some direction on that but what do you what do you see i mean it seems like this is a, a tall list of items to to try to tackle with and finances are obviously going to be a consideration. Excuse me, I'm having a hard time speaking after that number, but um, of course I have concerns, but um, I don't know that, um, I mean, it is what it is. I don't know what else we can do about it. Um, if we, we're going to address these things, we're going to have those issues. Um, so I don't really know what to say. I mean, I don't, I don't really know how to answer your question. I think Dr. Melton might want to weigh in on this. Oh. Well, first, I appreciate the question, but before I say anything, I would like to make sure we pause. The report and the results tonight are results of a lot of hard work. So it's easy for our facilities supervisors and our facility staff to think that they are part of this price tag, but instead I would argue they are part of reducing this price tag. So I would like, uh, there are a few here this evening, but there are so many that aren't, but there are administrators here. Please take back and share, because our staff is so focused on the maintenance and the upkeep, and Mr. Carlin's 
um, department. I've lost Mr. Carlin now. Thank you, Mr. Carlin. And then the cleanliness and upkeep under the supervision of principals and the facility supervisors, that cannot go overlooked. So if we could pause and just applaud those folks, I think this is a perfect time for us to make sure that we show that gratitude. <laughs> So Mr. White, if I may, I would say from on behalf of the administration, this is going to warrant a lot of conversation in our communities with our school improvement councils, which have obviously elected leaders um, in our communities, whoever may invite us out, how might we go in to make sure there's a message here so that we find out. Without clear direction from our community and from our board, how do we know where to start? So Mr. Lovis used an example earlier about safety that we heard about throughout the weekend. If that is the focus of this community and that is the will of this board, then that's where we start our work to then bring you some recommendations. I applaud the efforts of Mr. Richardson because he has worked with this team of Maggie and Robbie to make sure that they have been mindful to know what we've projected in the next few years out. So how might we manage the money that we have available to us to then respond to those needs that we note? And if we find a deficit, then what do we do? And then what might we need to do as a community? Um, back to the Irmo High School question, if I may go back to this origination of this conversation. If you remember the purpose when we set tonight's agenda, we talked about the variables that we were challenged and charged this team to take on for us. So when Dr. Hardy had the opportunity to be involved with working with Maggie, Dr. Hardy didn't have an opportunity to cast what it looks like to actually envision an arts magnet school. Instead, she pointed out things, she and Mr. Aiken, which I believe I saw Mr. Aiken earlier this evening. Mr. Aiken, we appreciate your facility supervision at Irmo High School. So as they walked the building, they talked about problems that we need to resolve rather than vision that we would like to pursue. So if we were to do an additional facility study, if that were the will of the board and we were to go that process, imagine what Dr. Padula could envision for IB at Irmo High School. I see Dr. Padula back there on the back row. So what might we do to make sure that we cast the vision of Irmo High School since that is a recommendation of our team? But then what might we do as a community and the will of the board to then clarify those objectives? I like the way you said, the priority of high, medium, and low. Um, when I first became a principal in this district, the school that I worked at, which happened to be right here in this building, we were the school right beneath the cutoff point. So we were number next, was our number. And still to this day, there's been lots of upkeep with carpet and other things that have been done here, but the facility needs still have been, they're growing rather than reducing. So if you're getting a crown, you can say that you are truly a king once you've been crowned. <laughs> but that's gonna resolve your problem with your dental issues. This is going to, I would say to Ms. Gardner, this is going to have a 10 year plan for us, but think about the things that haven't been problematic to this point that in the next four to five to eight to 10 years that will then become problematic. So it becomes an ongoing um, commitment that we make sure that our capital report is responsive, our capital budget is responsive to, but our planning for long term becomes part of the solution by prevention and then by responsibility. Mr. Gant, thank you for allowing me that opportunity. Any other questions from the board? Ms. Hammond. Um, this is just to say I would hope, too, <clears throat> conversation would be started um, uh, in some type of an enrollment study, like taking the two elementary schools that we've mentioned that are on this end. Um, it, it may be, and this is just conversation, it may be if we have a certain number in enrollment and two schools in the same area or near each other, it may behoove us that we got one really, you know, great school and you combine it. I just don't feel like we've, we've, we've gone away from the idea of ever rezoning, but I think that that's something that has to be on the table. I just think we have to look at equity also in number of kids that attend a school as we look at a, just a certain number of dollars. So that's just a, something else to put on the table. I don't say that I know the exact thing, but I think we certainly cannot deny looking at all options that best serves all the people equally and the money's distributed equally. Ms. Ms. Hutchison. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. Um, I, I want to thank um, Dr. Melton to, for pointing out the fact that about Irmo High School um, and that it was just looking at the existing facility. So what I, I would hate for everyone to leave this meeting thinking, okay, to replace Irmo High School, it would be 80 to 90 million. Well, that, it seems to me that that was to replace it as yes. it is now. 
and that's not necessarily what we may do. At this point, I'd rather just like wipe the slate clean um, and if this board decides to do further study for Irmo High School, then we can start getting some real numbers based on the enrollment, based on the, um, the international arts magnet, um, and all the things that Dr. Melton mentioned, because I, I do think that that's a different animal than merely um, replacing what we currently have. I'm going to go back to Dr. Melton and thank you again for those comments. But as you were speaking, I was looking around at the number of facility managers and workers that are here tonight. And I can tell you this board has said it over and over and the staff knows it. But we can walk into any school. I'm sitting here in this beautifully worn school tonight and it, it it's amazing to me that it has the age and the issues that I know it really has, but it's that nobody ever stops to say, nope, I'm gonna polish this floor, I'm gonna dust this uh, picture. So I wanna, for all of you facilities folks for all over our district, you do a wonderful job, a wonderful job. So uh, I appreciate you pointing that out. That was, that was wonderful. Well, uh, Ms. Hutchinson just had a great idea. If you're a facility worker, manager, or, and this includes you, Scott Carlin, I want all you folks to stand up and let us see who you are here tonight. <laughs> We do appreciate very much what you do in our schools every single day. Do, do we need, does anyone else have a, another question at this time? This, this is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is our first night to take a look at a, a, an overall facilities study of our needs. And I, I think we'll have lots and lots of more discussions, and I know it's going to go on in our district too. So, Mr. Brax, we appreciate you being here. Maggie, we appreciate you being here. Oh, oh Mr. White's got his hand up. Um, so, so two of these schools you're suggesting that the board consider replacing, and then I think the third school replacing. What, what kind of time period um, is involved in building a brand new school? I mean, what, what do you do? I mean, you obviously have to find new land, and then you'd have to build a new school, then you do something with the old school. So, so what, what does that process look like? Do you tear down the old school, or you just try to sell a facility? Or, I mean, none of that's occurred here. I mean, I, I remember hearing about Spring Valley High School. They tore it down completely and rebuilt it on the site. But what, what, what's the process there, and how much time's involved? Because in the last referendum, we obviously where there's renovations involved, you try to time that where you're not doing things in the middle of, of school year, if possible. But that seems like that's a very long, lengthy process if you're replacing a school completely. In a phased school approach, is that what you're talking about? Be it on the same campus? Or I think you suggested, you know, either or. I mean, either or option. I mean, if you phased it or if you found a new parcel of land and, and, and what do you do with an old school if you were to do that? And how long would it take? You've seen old schools repurposed for a lot of different things. You, uh, whether it's a retirement type facility or some other community facility is, is another use. Um, so as far as moving to another location, um, you've got a school up in Chapin right now. <laughs> what do you do with the old schools? I don't know. Um, building on the same site, I think I mentioned earlier about that, uh, that you know, a new school that would take 18 months to build if you try and do it in a phased fashion on existing campus, it would not be unusual to take 30 to 36 months instead of 18. We've planned several projects like that before. You know, the trick to it is that you want to do the demolition of the old building in the summertime when nobody's on campus. The other thing that we've done, uh, matter of fact, we did it over in uh, Lexington too here recently. Um, that have, actually, that was a big renovation, but it could be done. Is can you put the students somewhere else? 
can you put them, is there some way to, let's just take these two um, schools we're talking about, Nursery Road and Harbison West. Can, can we put all of them on one campus temporarily? Tear down the school, build a new school, then go over and do it at the other. It's like Irmo High School. You really got to study this. There's a lot of options to look at. Just have to start the conversation. It's Gardner. <clears throat> Um, in looking at the educational equity challenges um, throughout the schools, did you have a parameter that you were looking at, or did you? I just noticed across the board, there were always you had furniture issued, athletics, science, acoustics. There's nothing in here. Maybe a little bit of acoustics, but most of that's noise, not sound. Right. Did you um, have a perimeter for the arts for those kind of facilities across the district for equity? Did we study the arts programs in each school? Well, just to see if there was equity across the schools. That seems to not be included at all, and maybe it's because you felt that it was equitable or it just wasn't a parameter you used. You know, we really didn't get that deep into the, into the study of how the schools are used and exactly how the programs are across the board. Uh, that's a little bit different study, I think. Um, but think the that's spaces that they're athletics in. Athletics or science or. I'm sorry? I just. I just when you did go as deep as science rooms, you did go as deep as furniture, you did go as deep as, you know, lighting, athletic needs, but nothing to do, there's nothing listed for, you know, <coughs> auditoriums or, you know, arenas or that uh, type of a facility. Well, I think we did have a, I'm, I'm sorry, but we, I think we did have, you know, the auditorium at uh, Irmo Elementary School and a few other schools. There were some needs there. Okay. Now, um, you know, comparing the programs, we did not do. That's what I was referring to. Okay. They all have the same size stage, and that's sort of, we didn't go that deep into it. Sure. Mr. Grant, if I may add to that, and to bring context for Ms. Gardner, as Maggie walked the buildings with principals, Ms. Gardner, it's really about what the principal wanted to articulate as far as an identified need. They had heard from their staff, their SICs, their families, their students, their instructional vision. So as we started this project, we did not give an instructional equity checklist or rubric to them to use as they went on site. It was driven by observations, it was driven by interviews, as opposed to we're looking for a standard of what an arts program may look like. As we look at the instructional program, obviously the arts offerings at Irmo High School are much more unique than across the board the rest of our high schools. Those that are at Spring Hill are aligned with their magnet theme. So I don't want to make anyone think that they were looking for a standardization. Instead, it came from the interviews and it came from the items of interest to principals. But I would, I would argue we brought principals to the microphones, but we aren't principals. If they came <laughs> down, they were not trying to hit their laundry list. They likely were trying to hit the things that are most concerned to them and their stakeholders within their campus rather than trying to hit everything that they may list because, of course, that list would be exhaustive if we had included everything that they may have had. Mr. Rex, is that how you would agree that that was captured? Because I had a different lens than you did, but I didn't want the building as Maggie did. Yes, I agree. Ms. Gardner, you could. Ms. Hutchinson. Ms. <clears throat> um, Gardner reminded me of some notes that I had made um, on the Irmo High School page. Um, <laughs> And it had to do with this is looking at existing facilities. I, I believe we have an auto body repair, auto shop there. We have cosmetology. I'm not sure what other um, career and technology programs that we have. And certainly they're very old. Did you take a look at those um, just as they are now um, to see if they're adequate? The West Wing, I think the they West call Wing. it. Yes. <laughs> um, that's part of the uh, of the area that we talked about. We just need to completely redo. The, okay. 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 So, as I mentioned about rearranging, looking at your program, reorganizing, um, that West Wing is a big key of what I was referring to. Okay, so that would be that would be tied to Absolutely. the ver the vision of looking at the arts magnet. And then also the importance of the career and technology programs at, at Irmo High School, too, um, that are not duplicating what we have at the Kate Center, but are in addition um, to meet 
the needs of some of the students or an interest of some of the students there. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Hammond. Um, I had one question, and it may be in here, but I'm an audio learner. Um, did in the for my chafing friends here, when we were talking about uh, the stadium, it's just expanding the number of seats, and then will it also help them out on the other side for visitors to give them more? Is that in there too? Because I know they need the that. Yes. <laughs> okay. I I assumed it was, but yeah. I just thought for people here that maybe aren't seeing it and haven't been able to study it like we have seen. So it does, so it's, it's um, like you said, press box, and um, I remember seeing that in an extension of the number of seats. Do you know how many it will hold if we expand it to what Not you tonight, need? Not tonight, no, ma'am, I don't. I don't have that with me. Okay. I'd be glad to get it for you. Though. Yeah, I think my chafing friends want to know. Well, Mr. Brax, I thought we were wrapping but we've got more questions now so and i have a new question too <laughs> and uh, we think it evolves around the district office and your your plan for possibly a new part of the district office and then a <clears throat> then a renovation and part of the <clears throat> admin staying in on the current site and um, i was just wondering and mr Richardson, you you can help us with this how many acres are on that district office site is it is it eight or ten so i just i don't know but about a little between nine and ten acres. Okay. It was Mr. Brax says there. Um, if if we were to undertake this, <clears throat> there's there's a lot of a lot of great things about that district office. Number one is very centrally located. Mm -hmm. So if we undertook to build a new district office and we decided as a board to do it on that site, and we had that much land because part of that there's a ball field beside that's no longer used for anything. Would that be a, a facility that we might build a multi-story on the same site and be able to, to um, I don't even know if we'd need to do a, we'd probably just be able to do surface parking, but would that be an option rather than having a renovation of that pretty old structure and then trying to find another site that would, would keep those, would, to me it seems like it's great to keep those operations and bring some of the operations that, have, that are really district office operations that are now satellite out in the district, if we could bring those back. Is that an, I, I, I know it is an a option, I just don't know if it's not viable, but it seems to me with that much land, that could be a possibility. I think that land's very valuable, but then again, that's a, a value to be that centrally located in our district. Any thoughts there, any discussion you all had? Well, Mr. Chairman, um, I think you have enough property, yes. <laughs> One of the, th the three things that we had about the, uh, the district office, uh, too old, too small, and traffic in that commercial corridor. Um, you know, one of our thoughts was, could we do exactly what you, what you said? And we thought maybe instead of dumping out where you do now on Broad River, what is that road? Broad River, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe you could get that road that's running next to Walmart, but you don't have access to that road. Your, your, your property ends before that road, and um, so that's not a solution. The back side, the other side, it's almost just as busy as Broad River Road going to the interstate. One of the biggest challenges with your school district office is that it has grown in that, the commercial growth in that area. Can you physically do it? Yes, sir. Well, I, and I, I know you're probably aware of this, but there's a planned, and I know the whole community is very interested in this, planned road improvements from down below Dutch Fork Elementary through beyond the district office. Is there a possible way that we could work with the planners on those new lanes and new bike lanes and so forth to probably improve that or maybe improve our profile there? And that's a hypothetical. I know it just depends on how much you can work with another entity. And I hadn't really thought of exactly what you mentioned a little while ago, that traffic piece, because we've all been there at 4 o'clock on, 4.30, 5 o'clock, and try to turn, especially turning left out of there is impossible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just, to, just So, to, yes, you can, but it's tough. Yes. Um, <laughs> we were involved with the new Ballantyne Library 
Uh, if you haven't been there, it's a wonderful library, brand new library. Um, and that was a big part of our discussion and planning was trying to work with the um, road powers to be <laughs> to make it safe for, to get in and out there, We're trying to get a traffic light. But the rules for that are pretty stiff. Right. And, and <clears throat> right now, they weren't willing to do it, so that library doesn't, you just be very safe when you go, be careful when you go in and out of that library. Um, if you get a traffic light there, that'd be great, but you're really close to another intersection. And there is a, I forget what it is, 600 feet, something like that, so there's or yards, there's some feet, there's some um, distance that you can't, that you have to have between traffic lights. So, you know, you might be able to work with them, but when is that going to be? <laughs> right. Well, the, there's a, there's the a lot year of road we've requirements is, in this area. Right. The year we've heard for that study is 2020, which seems right around the corner. But it's, uh, I'm seeing a lot of flags, a lot of flagging tape and so forth, but I hadn't seen anything happening. Eventually it will. It's like a giant accordion every afternoon and a lot of accidents out there, too. How about other questions? Michael. When you visited uh, each of our facilities, you you made um, recommendations for the facilities, not for the programs housed in those facilities, correct? For the most part, yes, sir. Well, well that's a different, what do you mean for the most part? Um, so uh, let me just ask the question differently. Okay. You're, you're making building and design uh, recommendations, not educational program recommendations for each of the schools. Absolutely correct. Yeah. Yes. That, because the, some of our questions, I think, probably come back to, to programming and, and we'll have to probably have those broader question, um, discussions as a board and um, wait for uh, administration to give us um, their recommendations and for us to provide some guidance. So I, I appreciate the fact that, that you stuck to the to the task at hand and that we, we still have other decisions to make and conversations to have about the, the, we talk about educational equity, you're really looking at it as the space. I think we've got to take the little bit broader view to look at um, not just the space, but programs, uh, access for all our students. So I just I wanted to make sure I was clear on, on the language there. You are Thank correct, you. sir. Mr. Gant. Yes, ma'am. On your conversation about the district office land, um, and this may be more of a question for Mr. Richardson, do we still use some of that land that used to be used for like a soccer field? Is it no longer used for, you know, it's just, I mean, that's been, did, didn't we use, didn't we have a field there? I'm, I'm there, was, talking about, there was a softball, baseball right, field there. Right, because my boys played there. But it's no longer being used. So it's just land with nothing on it, or do we have, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think how far it goes down after Walmart got there. No, it's, there's nothing on it. We don't so use that, it for anything. That's land that you were talking about, Mr. Gann. I just wanted to right. get that in my head. So there is that space <clears> that <throat> if we did that plan right. that he showed us where you actually had two we had dual facilities on the same property, right. correct? Okay. Any, any other questions for tonight? Mr. Brax, Maggie, thank you very much for coming and presenting. This will be the first of many conversations. We may invite you back. For the public's knowledge, we've got some corrections to make, some uh, typos and so forth. We're going to try by midweek to have this document posted online. That's the, that's the goal and it'll be open for everybody to see in detail. But thank you again for being here. And with that, I'd entertain a motion that we adjourn. Do I have a motion? Ms. Hutchison. I move that we adjourn. We have a second. Mr. Loveless seconds. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your hand. We'd like to thank the, uh, and that passes unanimously. We'd like to thank the public that came tonight and our administrators, our facilities folks, and plan to come back. We'll be talking about this many more times. Thank you.